iterating. Uh, I thought in kit, instead of uh, typing out an answer, this one might be easier just to make a quick video of. Um, so looking at what you got so far, what you sent me compared to the question. So here's the question that you had, and here's what you have so far. Uh, this all up to here looks good. Okay. Um, I think where your confusion is coming in is what this 92.89 number represents. Um, so keep in mind when you're doing things from the periodic table, those boxes, remember there's that key on your periodic table, these numbers on the bottom are what we call a molar mass. Think about what that phrase means. Molar means related to one mole, and mass is your grams. Okay, that's an important concept because what that means is that this number right here is how many grams you would have if you had one mole. Now, look at what the question's starting you with. This is what you actually have. This right here is like a hypothetical situation. It's saying if there is one mole of this chemical, that's how many grams it'll weigh. But what you actually have is 575. I want you to think about this real quick. Do you have more than or less than one mole of NiOH parentheses two? One mole is 92.89 grams. You have way more than that. So you should actually be ending up with an answer bigger than one. So I want you to be thinking about that stuff um, as you're doing these. It'll actually help you kind of figure out and think through the how to solve it. Um, now, a couple of ways you could do this. Um, we could set this up as a proportion number where we say, okay, um, what does the question want me to have or want me to solve for? What do I have? And then the other side of the fraction or the equal sign comes from your molar mass here. Okay, so this is all molar mass stuff. So the question says, well, what do you want? How many moles? So we want, that's going to be our x. I'm just going to put in parentheses moles so that I remember what I'm looking for. What do we have? We have 575 grams. The reason it's important to put those in a certain order is because on this side, the units have to match up. Okay? When you have an equal sign in between, in order for this fraction to be equal to the other side, the units have to line up, which means this side has to have grams on the bottom because I have grams on the bottom of 575, and then I have on top. The numbers that we get for this come from our molar mass. So 92.89 grams, and then one mole. Now really what the proportion is saying is, hey, you know that one mole is 92.89 grams. What if we scaled this up to 575, okay? It's asking then, well, if we scale it up to 575, how many moles do we have? And we should expect to get an answer bigger than one because 575 is bigger than 92. Right? All right, so I'm just going to real quickly, This, whenever you have an equal sign, this is a cross-multiply problem. So I'm going to have one divided by 92.89, and then I have to multiply 575 to get x by itself. When I do that, I get that x equals 6.19. The grams would actually cancel out, and I'd have moles left over. Okay. If proportions aren't working for you, you can do it as a, a conversion, like what you were taught in uh, physics last year. Um, so in physics, you could always say, okay, take what you have. You're going to multiply it by your conversion fraction to get what the question wants you to solve for. It's actually the same setup, it's just in a different format. So the have again is the number that you have from this question, 575 grams. The fraction will leave blank for now. What we want when we're done is moles. Because the question asks, how many moles, right? Okay. In a conversion, because you have a time sign in between, okay, we need this grams to go away. In this case, now you need things to go on opposite sides of the fraction. So if I have grams on the top, what I have, I need grams on the bottom to cancel. 
and the numbers from the fraction are going to come from your molar mass again. So it's saying, okay, if you have 575 grams, then we know 92.89 grams is one mole. Okay, well, I need to have grams on the bottom now because opposite sides cancel units, and then the one mole on top. Okay, and so grams would cancel. And in this case, we take 575, multiply by 1, divided by 92.89, and we should, if we did everything right, get the same answer, 6.19. Okay, so I think the key for you here, Terry, is that number right there, 92.89. Make sure you get that as grams that equal 1 mole, and then you can use that in your math, which anything else that you have. If you have any questions, if that doesn't make sense, please let me know.